Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench and this week we're going to go over a tutorial that we did back last year in, in February and uh, improve it. And I don't know what's up here, but apparently there are comments that I'm not getting uh, notified from. So if I haven't seen something from yours, I apologize. Feel free to ping me again. All right, so let's get to this. So here we have a shape blobbing together and you can see it's made out of two circles that are colliding with each other. The reason they're kind of set in is because we're using a stroke to knock this out. And this is a really simple setup. All it is is a shape with merge paths on it and a stroke that's set to a round join. And if you want to quickly do that without having to drill down into all this stuff, you can actually download butt capper from battleaxe.co and then you option click on one of these buttons to change the join style. So then after that merge paths, we just have to make sure that our stroke is on top of our fill. And then all we have is a simple set mat up here that's set to luminance of the same layer. And then for some reason you'll get like a little fringe sometimes. So just throw a simple choker on there with like set to one. If for some reason you need this to be the actual size that it was, you can add an offset path. And I'll show you how to do that in the next one. So I'm kind of dumb and I actually set a final comp up with this colored in it, but you don't really need to do that. All you have to do is add a fill to this. Add a fill, just pick this ray thing right here. And now it's the same and all in the one comp and it is infinitely scalable. I didn't call them better blobs for nothing. What do you think, I was gonna give you a tutorial where they're not better? Come on. All right, so let's jump into a more complex example like we did before. So say you have the logo right here and the only thing that's gonna happen is if you have like sharp corners that need to be maintained, things like this are gonna get dropped out. It's just how it goes. So this one already has an offset pass applied and I'm actually gonna junk all this so I can show you how to do it real quick. So I'm gonna add a merge pass here. And it's gonna add its own stroke and fill. Leave the stroke on top, turn it on, set to 67% opacity for some reason. So let's fix that. Let's set this to 20. Let's add an offset paths. It went right above the stroke, which is perfect. And we're gonna leave that set to 10. So then we're gonna set this join right here to round join. And that's all we need to do. Since I wanna actually see this, I'm gonna set this to black. And I'm gonna go over here and set the fill to white. And just so you remember, the reason why we're setting this to white and black is because we're using set matte with luminance to knock out the stroke. Right now, if you went transparent, it would look like that. So we're gonna add an ellipse to this and we're gonna put that over here, scale this up and do this. Now you can see it's already melting together right in there. So let's close that up a little bit. Let's actually link our offset paths to the stroke width. So I'm gonna option click amount and then pick whip stroke width and then hit divided by two semicolon cause I like to end my lines. And then you can scale this up. And as you can see, as long as you don't go too crazy, you can get it to melt together a little bit more. Let's turn this back on real quick. When you start getting like that. Now you can unlink this and play with them independently, but that's not gonna keep the integrity of your shape if you need it to be close. So I'm gonna undo that and turn that back on. So I'm gonna bring the strip width back just to there. So obviously you can't use this on the logos that need to stay perfect, but you're using blobs here, so this really should be for an organic look. So now if we open up our ellipse again, you can pass it through see what it looks like. And that's pretty much it. There's kind of one other neat thing you could do. Say you're making this blob. So what you can do is duplicate this layer. And if you want, you can actually link the properties together with expressions. But I'm just gonna leave this as two animated pieces. So what we can do on top of here now is we can get rid of this set mat, simple choker, fill, all of that stuff. And you can open this up. You can add an offset path to this. And then you can actually use a negative value to bring it in. We're gonna get rid of the fill here. We're gonna shrink the stroke, shrink the stroke down. Yep, I just said that. And we're not gonna offset by that much. We keep this as a round join. And then we're gonna take this down. We're gonna make the stroke white to white. And then what I'm gonna do is add a little trim pass here. I'm gonna bring this in a little bit, bring this back. Now we can go into our stroke, make a dash. And if you set this to zero, you get like dots. See. So I'm gonna add another another dash here. I'm gonna add a gap, kind of like the way that looks. So now what's cool is as it gets bigger, it'll animate that in. So as always, play around with it and see what you guys come up with. All right, guys. I am Joe from Workbench. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out Patreon.com/Workbench. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. All right, have a good day and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.